No, no, he doesn't. Welcome back, people. Uh, it is my very great pleasure and an honor uh, to introduce to you Professor Dr. David Ray Pompke, uh, who is a law professor at Marquette University. He teaches, among other things, American legal history and property and family law, but most especially, from our point of view, uh, he teaches a range of uh, interdisciplinary courses and seminars uh, on law and popular culture, law and humanities, and he is a, a long-standing author uh, in the field, some, some really powerful books. Um, one, uh, uh, Law and Popular Culture with, with uh, Christine Corpos, uh, I particularly recommend it. It's a really fine, fine text from 2012. Uh, but he's done a range of these things, some of them with an emphasis on legal history kinds of things, but many of them with a very strong insight uh, into uh, the impact of law on popular culture, and I think it's fair to say vice versa. So uh, I, I think it's uh, quite appropriate that we have Dr. Popke talk to us about uh, the impact of utopia uh, as uh, a feature, a very important feature of law and literature. But before we begin, I have a little presentation that I'd like to make to Dr. <laughs> would you come on up here? We would like to invest you in our official. Oh, <laughs> all right. Utopia 500 right. Club. <laughs> you can now proudly say it's me and Tommy Walker. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I like it. Uh, is yeah. that his color? Or? Uh, well, that's uh, our color. <laughs> I think the gray is his color. Oh, okay. See, so it's <laughs> sort of a perfect yeah. meld. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's nice. my pleasure. Oh, no, nice. And thank you again for agreeing to come here and, and speak with us on this subject. And I hand it over to you. All right. Thanks. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, it also was a pleasure to uh, work on this paper. Uh, 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 at my school, uh, people are in this uh, pre-spring break down, uh, where the faculty and the students are sort of holding on by their fingernails uh, waiting for spring break. live in the room. And uh, I sort of had to keep it to myself how much fun I was having working on this paper. I'd be a marked man if my faculty colleagues thought I was having a good time at this time of the year. Uh, uh, everybody I know uh, is familiar with this, but uh, uh, Sir Thomas More has extraordinarily high standing in Western uh, religion and uh, politics. Uh, uh, Pope Pius uh, XI uh, uh, said he was the greatest martyr of the English Reformation. And the church made him saint. 1935, uh, he remains to this day the patron saint of statesmen and politicians. Uh, 18th century Anglo-Saxon uh, satirist and political commentator uh, Jonathan Swift uh, uh, said that when Henry VIII, quote, cut off the head of Sir Thomas More, he beheaded a person of the greatest virtue this kingdom ever produced. Um, and not to be outdone praising More, the early 20th century critic and lay theologian C.K. Chesterton uh, said that Moore, uh, quote, may come to be counted the greatest Englishman, uh, or at least the greatest historical character in English history. This is lavish praise. <laughs> you know, this is not uh, uh, small uh, potatoes. Uh, well, in light of all this, uh, 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 this lionizing from uh, Christians and from uh, champions of individualism, it comes as a bit of a surprise uh, that further to the East, where atheism and collectivism often trump Christianity uh, and individualism, the important spokesmen have also lionized uh, uh, Sir Thomas More. Uh, Karl Kautsky, uh, who was the most important theorist of uh, Marxism, uh, uh, wrote a whole book on War. Uh, Thomas More uh, and his Utopia. And according, according to Kautsky, uh, more thought and ideals uh, are the quote unquote four gleam of modern socialism. Four gleam of modern socialism. And at the time of the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, Lenin himself 
uh, suggested that more be included in a monument uh, honoring great Western thinkers uh, that was erected in Alexandrovsky Gardens in Moscow. Uh, and uh, so uh, Moore's work as a barrister, uh, service in the parliament, uh, honesty as high uh, or chancellor, uh, even his beheading, I don't think any of those things are the reasons uh, for the atheist and collectivist praise of Moore. Uh, instead, Moore appealed to Kautsky, Lenin, and uh, uh, other secular collectivists, uh, collectivists, chiefly because they found the ideal sketch, ideal society sketch in utopia to be appealing. Um, they respected Moore not because of what he did, but rather because, because of what he wrote. Uh, and uh, uh, Utopia, they thought, uh, pointed in the direction uh, that they hoped society would evolve. With their, with their so I want to explore uh, Thomas More's uh, uh, communistic inclinations, as I call it, um, uh, by which I mean not so much his uh, general mental bent, but the, rather the way uh, the ideas and policies expressed in Utopia uh, lean toward modern communism. Uh, and uh, I want to reflect on uh, how a utopia tilts to the left, figuratively, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I want to look for uh, more to Marx. Um, and uh, in that vein, what are the bases and dominant features of Moore's communistic uh, society? How does this society uh, compare to the communism imagined by Karl Marx and his interpreters? And uh, also, uh, might uh, Moore's utopia help us understand and perhaps elude uh, the alienation that is so much part of modern life? Uh, and uh, I think these uh, questions uh, and the answers, I hope, uh, are the most modern parts of utopia. Uh, and in my opinion, to the extent uh, uh, utopia lives on uh, as relevant in the present, 500 years later, in these areas. Uh, rather than others uh, that you might have heard discussed in other speakers. Uh, so uh, I guess it's just as a preface to this consideration of more uh, communistic inclinations, I should make clear that I do not take a utopia uh, to be uh, a political tract. Uh, it's not a work uh, directly advocating a uh, political position uh, or capable of producing passionate engagement and fueling a movement, anything of that sort. Um, uh, it's complex, sometimes contradictory as a work. Uh, and it was originally written in Latin, I guess you all know that, but uh, the intended audience was a small group of northern um, Renaissance humanists. Uh, it was more say, intellectual peer group, I guess. Uh, and, uh, and really, uh, in the beginning, only a handful of people read, read the work. Uh, and uh, it's a very oddly shaped work. It begins with uh, uh, the utopian alphabet and a few utopian poems, uh, at least in my version. Of it. Then there's a, a letter from Moore to uh, Peter Gillis, a town clerk in Antwerp. Uh, and this first letter is followed by another letter from Gillis to Jerome Wusleyden, uh, uh, who was a uh, teacher of some sorts. In the second letter, uh, Gillis uh, praises Moore to a kind of embarrassing extent, but we'll put it in the book anyway. <laughs> then book one takes the form of a conversation between Moore and a fictional Portuguese uh, seaman named Raphael. Then book two is Raphael's account of this world, this fantastic world. Uh, that book two ends with Moore's own stunted objections to what Raphael had to say. Uh, so uh, for one scholar, Utopia is, quote, like one of those wooden puzzles, a segmented ball where we seem always to end with some dominant idea that approximates the whole, and yet find ourselves with a number of awkward shaped pieces that cannot be made to fit. And of course, that would scratch the word. Yeah. In fact, you, you wonder if more hope to obscure whatever it is he might actually have thought. Uh, yeah, he peppered the book with jokes, uh, which served to distance himself uh, from things and also the readers. Uh, it's uncertain really how seriously he expected readers uh, to take the work. Um, 
the Raphael, the, the Portuguese demon, his last name is uh, Hithlode, H-Y-T-H-L-O-D-A-Y, uh, which means peddler of nonsense in Greek. Uh, and, uh, and the editor of the edition with which I work, I didn't bring the, my book with me, uh, he even brags uh, in the preface to the book that, uh, to make things clear, he's changed Raphael's last name to Nonsenso. <laughs> Nonsenso. <laughs> so throughout my version, I don't know. Is that true in other versions too? Uh, what's that about? <laughs> I, uh, nonsense, I guess. Uh, so uh, I, uh, when I was talking about um, uh, the book, I, I chiefly admired the, the character Raphael's uh, 